From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Conway Report. The Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa's new war room became fully operational earlier this month, with Transport Minister Fikile Mbulula officiating its opening. Journalist Simone Litka tells us more. In the words of the minister, the continued decline in service that Prasa provides the commuting public required the urgent address of the entity's turnaround, hence the launch of the war room. In speaking to delegates at the opening, the minister emphasised that the war room is about the people and that it is now a key measure of government's commitment to improve. This is a culmination of a commitment we made to move with speed in addressing critical challenges in our passenger rail environment. This is in line with the Kaulesa ethos that underpins our work and grounded on the principle of accelerated service delivery. This war room is about the people and a key measure in delivering on our commitment to improve our public transport system. This room that hosts the war room is a physical space that will enable those deployed to the war room to make rapid decisions based on the information they gather from the operations on the ground on an hour by hour basis. The screens reflect metrics that the technical team will use to, lies to track and measure performance daily. In a build up to the opening, media visited the signal cabin at Alsberg Station in Germiston, which is said to embody the challenges that Prasa currently faces. In an attempt to address these, the war room will focus on service recovery, safety management and the accelerated implementation of the modernization program. The war room will focus on three. The first is service delivery, paying particular attention on rolling stock, availability and reliability, infrastructure availability and reliability and train performance. As part of service recovery intervention, the war room will direct its efforts towards the realization of the following targets by 31st December. Improve on time performance of Metro Rail to 85%, currently at 50.2%, at getting people to work and centers of economic activity on time does not only enable productive population but also ensures sustainable livelihoods. Improve on time arrivals of Sosholoza mail to above 50%, currently at 3%. Sosholoza mail has been an important enabler of those who travel from far flung and rural provinces to access work opportunities and indeed business prospects in urban centers for many decades. These are people who cannot afford other modes of transport and depend on long distance trains to make a living. Ensure metro rail train set availability is at 291 train sets currently at 157. Overcrowding in trains due to insufficient number of train sets on any given day creates a fatal ground for criminality, activity and injustice injuries in our commuter rail environment. Improve locomotive availability of Shosholoza mail to 60%, currently below 40%. The main driver of poor on-time departures and arrivals for long-distance trains is the unavailability of locomotives. Achieve 100% correct configuration of train sets, currently at 41%. Trains that have fewer coaches that uh, what a normal train should have contributes greatly to overcrowding. Reduce area under speed restrictions to less than 100 kilometers of the network, currently at 167 kilometers. A large part of the network is under speed restrictions due to aging infrastructure or other safety issues resulting in delays. Injecting agency in addressing these issues will reduce the delays in our trains. The second focus is safety management. Paying particular attention to implementing 
effective measures to protect rolling stock, staging yards, payway, electrical and signal uh, infrastructure, depots, stations, and most importantly, passengers on board our trains. Integral to this is achieving full co compliance with the railway safety regulator permit conditions and directives. The third focus is accelerated <coughs> implementation of the modernization program. This entails urgently creating capacity for Praza to manage capital projects and spend its capital budget to achieve effective sequencing of critical infrastructure that will enable the deployment of the new trains in targeted corridors. Media also visited Prasa's Gauteng Nerve Centre, based in Tembisa, which will host up to 80% of the province's 98 signal cabins by June next year. Other news making headlines. Bosco bought to finalise sustainability plan within six months. And IDC urged to up its counter-cyclical game as Patel sets 110 billion rand funding targets. Fosco's board is conducting a comprehensive review of the group's underperforming operations with the aim of developing a sustainability plan within the coming six months. And at this stage, all I can sensibly say is that we are simply investigating every aspect of why it has underperformed in production, why it has underperformed in costs, and why it has uh, uh, underperformed in profitably selling its products, both domestically and uh, abroad. And once we are a bit clearer, I mean, our goal is to make it sustainable. Trade and Industry Minister Ibrahim Patel is insisting that the IDC play a more assertive counter-cyclical investment role in the South African economy and has formally set a 110 billion rand five-year disbursement target for the state-owned development finance institution. In the next five years of the administration, the IDC is expected to approve nearly 110 billion rand in industrial funding. We'll be looking to unlock more private investment per rand of public resources that are invested. In the last five years, the IDC crowded in 89 billion rand from the private sector to support growth of local industry. So the real impact of the corporation is not only in the approvals and critically the disbursements it makes, but how it helps through its uh, resource management to unlock the significantly bigger pockets of, private, uh, of the private sector. That's Cream Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.